11 and 12. Do miracles exist? Does God really move? Is it possible that God is able to turn a man's situation around? The Bible says, Thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. I love verse 12. I've read this scripture many times, but the Lord gave me a powerful revelation. He said, to the end that my glory will sing praise to thee and not be silent, O Lord my God, I will give thanks to thee forever. He said, listen, I have been thanking you, but I want my results to also join you. He says, to the end that my glory, not just me, my glory, I long for my glory to also sing praises to you. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have turned my sorrow, or you have taken away sackcloth and girded me with gladness. Other versions will say you have turned my sorrow into joy. Listen, I want you to know and to believe that miracles do happen. I want you to believe that God is able to intervene over the lives of people. I want you to believe, please listen carefully. I'm staring your faith now. I want you to believe that signs and wonders are real. I want you to believe that new levels in the spirit and in destiny is possible. I want you to believe that God is able to make something that was not in your hand today to be in your hand the next moment. It is within the power of God. And I want you to believe that God is able to take something you did not want, that the devil is forcing in your hand to live your life. I want you to believe that the power of God can transport things from the realm where they are hidden to the realm where they manifest in your life. You have to believe this. The life that we have been called into is a supernatural life. You must believe that God is able to save. Look at the testimony of that dear lady. Salvation, everyone, someone who had been plagued with drugs, smoking and doing all of this and she not only had an encounter that encounter spilled over to all her loved ones that is the power of god i have seen the power of god in my life i would be a liar if i told you that i've not seen certain dimensions of god i have seen god's strange visitations i have seen the power of god in this ministry what God is doing today is a testament of his power. My assignment tonight is to stand in partnership with the Holy Spirit to the end that the power of God be made manifest in your life in a way that is unmistakable. There are things that happen and you can doubt. Maybe it was God, maybe it was this. But there are things that happen. You stand and you know that this one, it was only God. Hallelujah. But I want you to believe. Do you know, most believers, the only reason why they clap over the manifestation of miracles is just that the testifiers are before them. But if they were left to the question, can God do this? They may just laugh. Part of the advantages of being spiritual is that your faith becomes so built that you can believe God for anything. Listen, this is my Bible. You see, when the Bible speaks as a parable, it will tell you it was a parable. Are we together? When the Bible speaks as something that actually happened to men, to cities, the Bible will state it very clearly. Read the Bible and see the awe-inspiring, fearful things that were done by the power of God. They were not parables. By this time tomorrow, it was not a parable. The Red Sea parting. Forget all the arguments that, you know, all of these arguments that people bring around. Let God be true and every man a liar. How about a 25-year-old barrenness situation in the Bible that was turned around overnight? How about resurrection? 
How about all kinds of miracles? Impotent folks, folks that were, were left for dead. How about demonic oppressions? One of the women that worked in the welfare department of Jesus' ministry, he had to cast seven demons out of her. How about Lazarus? How about the fig tree that would take from the earth and yet not bring fruit? He cursed it physically and by the next day it had withered. How about ravens that brought bread for Elijah at Brook Cherith? How about five loaves and two fish that fed 5,000 people? Sometimes it's not just a new job you need. You need a miracle of favor. As simple as that. Hallelujah. How about Elijah running on barefoot and overtaking the chariots of Ahab down to Israel? Except you are not a Christian. How about people mocking God, keeping the ark of God close to Dagon and locking the door? They left the altars alone and by the next day Dagon fell forward to the ground. What altar cannot fall? There was no man of God who was preaching and praying and saying Dagon fall. They just left two of them. How about angels that threw hailstones and killed hundreds of thousands of people overnight? How about Saul who encountered Samuel the prophet and returned back meeting all kinds of miracles waiting for him? Do you not believe the Bible? There is nothing in your life today by the authority of scripture I tell you this. There is no situation here represented, no matter how complicated, that is worth making God scratch his head and saying, we've never seen this kind. We're talking about the God of the Bible. Is it your bills? Is it a medical condition? You've heard of God healing people here. Listen, I'm not inhuman. I understand that in the presence of painful situations, whether medical, whether financial, the truth is that these things can convey a level of pain that you can feel. If you are told you have cancer, or if you are told you have um, some kind of sickness, the pain is there, the growth is there, the lump is there. You, come, you came with someone who is mad, the madness is there. The person is misbehaving, you are seeing the person. If it's a demonic pattern over a family where nobody rises, you can clearly see it. But the Bible says, while we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen, unseen does not mean unreal. You can look at invisible things. Right now, while you are seated, you can look at the healed you, or you can continue looking at the sick you you can look at the you with an employment with dignity and honor or you can look at the you that is supposedly miserable and helpless the bible leaves us with the liberty to be able to look at the things seen and the things unseen it takes the eyes of faith to see through the lens of scripture that I may be sitting right now as a tenant or not even knowing where my rent will come from. But I know, I know, I know that there is a God in heaven who can turn things around. I may be sitting holding a medical report right now. Look at the lady. Three months, they said. After three months, you are gone. And it's been only God knows how long. I believe in Jesus. I believe in his power. I believe that he heals. I believe that he prospers. I believe that he delivers. I do. I believe that he's able to give speed. I believe that he's able to restore. Please look up. I believe he's able to bring laughter. I believe that God is able to save whole families within a moment. I truly believe it. 
I would be wasting your time here if I didn't believe it. I believe it. Onisha, Iyanu, you're the God of all some wonders, tasted of your power. Onisha, you have shown me so much mercy. Listen, I am a student of the miraculous and I'm a Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.